guys. Uh, my name is Ashton Kumar. I'm a software engineer at uh, Pivotal, and I'm going to talk about Pivotal Hadoop as a Cloud Foundry service. For those of you who don't know, Hadoop is an open source Apache project for distributed computing at large scale. Uh, it's made up of a couple of components, HDFS, uh, which is the Hadoop file system. It's designed for large I.O., meaning block sizes of tens of megabytes, uh, where the typical access pattern is you write data once and read it many times over the course of uh, long-running analytics. There's also YARN, which is a cluster and resource scheduling framework. Uh, and probably the component you're, you're most familiar with is MapReduce, which is the popular paradigm for doing batch processing with extreme parallelism. So Pivotal has its own Hadoop distribution. It adds the enterprise features you might expect, like a GUI for monitoring the system to see which nodes of the system have failed, uh, starting and stopping services, things like that. We also added a bulk data loader so that you could get data in and out efficiently. And also noteworthy here is that we've added the uh, virtualization extensions that came out of VMware so that when HDFS is replicating your blocks across different physical nodes for the sake of reliability, we're also cognizant of the fact that two VMs might actually be on the same physical host. On top of this, we've also added the advanced database services, uh, which the main component of which is Hawk. Uh, this is our Greenplum database technology, which we've matured over the last 10 years for data warehousing and very complex analytics, redesigned and re-architected to work natively on HDFS. It is, at the moment, the world's fastest SQL on Hadoop distribution. And what's key there is that it's pure SQL. It is the SQL 92 <laughs> standard which means you get window functions, you get any type of join that you'd like, and user-defined functions are coming shortly. Uh, in addition to that, we've also got uh, anti-SQL transaction support, which is something that is difficult to uh, implement on HDFS. So in talking about Pivotal Hadoop for Cloud Foundry, we firmly believe that these Cloud Foundry applications are going to become increasingly data-intensive. Rather than needing a single node Postgres instance, you're going to need the, the capabilities of a vast Hadoop cluster. And so the kinds of use cases that we're starting to think about are being able to park unstructured data on HDFS, be able to then analyze that data with MapReduce, and then use Hawk, if you'd like, to do very deep and complex analytics using machine learning algorithms to do fraud detection or regression analysis. And so this, this is really the value proposition uh, for application developers of these very uh, data-intensive applications. But how exactly are we going to do this? You know, as users of Cloud Foundry, you might be familiar with the notion that Cloud Foundry is open, fundamentally. Uh, but that might be, in particular, in regards to how Cloud Foundry is portable across different infrastructures. Um, I, it's, I think that openness is a bit more fundamental than that in that Cloud Foundry is fundamentally extensible itself. And so what we intend to do is to make Hadoop run as a service in Cloud Foundry so that the application developers building on top are able to leverage more value from the paths. Just, so, you know, just the way that you get a domain name and get your app hosted on the paths and get single node services like Redis and Postgres, you'll now get the distributed computing services of Hadoop. At the core of this extensibility is a communication that occurs between the cloud controller in uh, Cloud Foundry and the service broker that is responsible for negotiating on behalf of, of the external service. This communication is responsible for a couple of things. Uh, catalog management, provisioning, and binding. Uh, catalog management is the act of the service broker telling the cloud controller, what service am I providing to the PaaS, to the application developers that are going to use the PaaS? Provisioning is the act of actually setting aside resources on the service so that apps can actually consume the service. Binding is the ensuing act where uh, applications are given the authorization and the credentials they need to actually use that service, those, those resources that we've set aside. What's, what's key to note here is that provisioning and binding, they're all entirely service defined, which means it's up to the service to declare what it means to provision Hadoop or MySQL, or Postgres, or Redis. And for a service that's quite as complicated as Hadoop, that's, that's critical, because there's so many different ways of thinking of Hadoop as a service. 
I'd like to start with what's probably the most straightforward, most accessible way of thinking of Hadoop as a service, and that is to think about a shared static Hadoop cluster that is Bosch deployed along with a service broker adjacent to whatever Cloud Foundry uh, uh, deployment that you have on whatever infrastructure you've chosen. In this model, you'll have an HDFS, Yarn, Hawk cluster, along with many of the other components. And it would be the service broker's responsibility to negotiate on behalf of that shared static cluster. When the provision request is received by the service broker, it will merely propagate that onto the various subcomponents of the Hadoop cluster. Uh, the various subcomponents will then reserve space and capacity for that provision request. So in the case of HDFS, this is a matter of setting aside space, uh, 10 terabytes of storage perhaps. In the case of Hawk, just as it might be with Postgres, it's a matter of creating a database. The act of binding that occurs next to actually get apps access to what you set aside on HDFS is a matter of getting the right permissions to the file system. On Hawk, it's a matter of creating the users in the Hawk database so that they can start manipulating SQL objects. I think that's really the, the first incarnation of Hadoop as a service. It's really, I think, the most accessible. But there's a very full roadmap here. And I'd like to, to walk you through some of these in a bit more detail. So we do sell Hadoop independently, of course. And you know, for those customers who have bought Hadoop, they're going to have to make a decision between running it on bare metal or running it as a Bosch deployed uh, Hadoop cluster on potentially virtualized infrastructure. That's going to be a very subtle trade-off between some performance versus the manageability and the unified experience that you're going to get with Bosch with the rest of the stack that you get from us, including Cloud Foundry. And so we know we need to cater to both of those use cases. And so what we're going to look at next is being able to take a Hadoop cluster on the 100 nodes of bare metal uh, commodity hardware that you've bought, that you've invested in, and be able to use that same Hadoop cluster to work with your Cloud Foundry instance. Uh, and so again, this would be a shared cluster. It's simply that the nodes of your Hadoop cluster are on bare metal. Beyond this, we recognize that once you've got bare metal clusters, you've got some uh, Bosch deployed clusters, we're going to need to be able to negotiate among multiple clusters. And what that means is some of your clusters might be at 90% utilization, some of them might be a lower utilization. We need to have the placement algorithms that allow the service broker to decide where should I put that next provision request? Where's the best place to allocate that 10 terabytes of storage? Which cluster isn't utilized with respect to compute capacity? And where do we put that request? Moving beyond this, I think when you really start talking about deep complex analytics, it's commonly the case that some of those queries, you may not know exactly what the resource requirements of those computations are ahead of time. Uh, that's very much the case when you talk about a query with 10 joins and user-defined functions where you don't know quite exactly what those functions are going to do ahead of time. So as to not uh, disrupt other workloads that might be on the cluster, it becomes important for these use cases to have exclusive clusters. And so our service broker is going to need to be able to provision and bind a series of apps to one cluster that is used fully and entirely by that uh, provision request, by that set of applications. Uh, and so we know that's, that's a use case that will come up. Um, and from here, it's really a natural, logical <coughs> jump to why should the cluster have been provisioned beforehand? Why can't we, at the time you run CF create service, why can't we find the capacity, designate one of them as the name node, designate one of them as the hawk master, designate the remaining 100 as Hadoop slaves, and build the cluster right at that moment? And that's, that's what dynamic provisioning would look like. Um, and, and from here, as application developers, you don't really want to care about how many Hadoop nodes you have. You're going to run a MapReduce job, and you want that paradigm to exist. You're going to want a quality of service that can describe when you're going to get your data back. And so from here, it's natural to think, well, why can't we create the cluster, run the MapReduce job, tear down the MapReduce uh, cluster, and return the result back to the user? And that sort of flexibility, that sort of elasticity, is something that we're going to pursue and something that takes us closer to what Amazon Elastic MapReduce will have. And that's really in, in the, the recurring theme of what you've heard over the last day or so, not, not wanting to care about what the infrastructure is running on, not wanting to care about what Hadoop cluster you're using, 
we're aware that as application developers, you're going to want something higher level in the stack, and it's not necessarily Hadoop as a service, it's going to be analytics as a service. So to wrap this up, what we're delivering later this year is a pivotal Hadoop cluster that is Bosch deployable and will be exposed as a Cloud Foundry service. Uh, this will be a shared static HDFS uh, cluster with Hawk and Hive and HBase. And um, when you provision, you're going to get shared capacity on that cluster. And we firmly believe that this, in conjunction with Cloud Foundry, puts us in a position to seize the opportunity of this new wave of very data-intensive apps. And again, to reiterate, all of this, coping with all of that complexity of what a Hadoop service means, that's only possible really because of the extensibility of Cloud Foundry. That's it. Thank you.